Hey everyone, Black6 from BZ Power back here for another set review. Today from the LEGO Ideas line, we have got 21304 Doctor Who, which contains 623 pieces and retails for $60 in the US. Uh, so this is the first time we've gotten a Doctor Who LEGO set. Of course now there's also the um, level pack for LEGO Dimensions. Um, this is the le 11th LEGO idea set, as indicated in the corner there. Uh, we've got uh, the interior of the TARDIS making its main appearance, and of course we have the 12th Doctor, portrayed by Peter Capaldi and uh, Clara, and we can see a couple Daleks coming in, and on the right we've got the 12th or 11th Doctor, portrayed by Matt Smith, and of course the Weeping Angel. Uh, got a stylized version of the TARDIS here, and of course the nice BBC Doctor Who logo. Um, the age range, who cares about that, and the piece number. Top, got a one-to-one -one scale image of Capaldi, and some other stuff going on. Uh, since this is a LEGO idea set, you can see it is a nice premium packaging, very nice feel, resealable box. On the back, we've got uh, some interior shots, uh, additionally the TARDIS, you can see the, the TARDIS uh, top pops off and it opens up allowing you to get to the inside and we see the variety of characters it contains and uh, it shows that you know uh, the 11th doctor regenerates into the 12th and then we have a little description uh, about how the lego ideas process works you can submit your own idea and it will get turned uh, into a set if you get enough votes and if uh, lego approves it um, not necessarily the easiest this is uh, as we mentioned only the 11th set to do so um, but, uh, you know, it's obviously possible. So let's crack this puppy open and see what we've got inside. All right, so on the inside of this nice box, we've got, of course, a number of bags. They are not numbered, there are just a number of them. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different bags. And then, of course, the, uh, the nicely bound instruction book. It's got a nice matte finish. Uh, you can see it's not really glare, uh, there's not a lot of glare from my light like there is on the, uh, from the, uh, the glossy box. You can see that, uh, that glare there. Not so much on here. Uh, like I said, nicely bound, you can win. Uh, if we look on the inside, there's some information about uh, Doctor Who. Got a nice picture of Capaldi and Clara. Uh, some information about all the characters here, a little bit about who they are, and of course the TARDIS, who is a character in its own right, especially in certain episodes. And then of course we've got the instructions. And uh, so we, oh, hang on, saw something interesting here. So it looks like um, similar to the Ghostbuster Ecto-1 and some of the other sets, there are little facts in the instruction book. So this one talks about the weeping angels and how they only move when no one is looking. Makes them uh, very scary. Uh, don't blink. Blink and you're dead. Uh, let's see. And then as we get to the end there, uh, there's uh, some information about the designers. So Andrew Clark is the person who submitted the project to LEGO Ideas and got it turned into an actual set. And then it looks like there is Samuel Johnson and Adam uh, Corbelly who work at Lego, who took the project and turned it into an actual set. And there's an interesting fact, I don't know if it's mentioned here, that Samuel Johnson uh, is actually, I believe, the grandson of the actor who played, I want to say, the Eighth Doctor. I might be wrong, but there is a relationship between Samuel and uh, one of the actors who played one of the previous Doctors. And of course we have the inventory. Uh, and oh, got an ad for the Lego Dimensions pack and uh, some more information about the LEGO Ideas program. All right, with uh, that out of the way, let's take a closer look at some of these pieces. So here we've got the parts from the set divided up into seven uh, trays. We'll go through some of the uh, rare or unique parts. Actually, uh, according to Bricks at least, there are no parts in the set that are completely unique to it, thanks in part to the LEGO Dimensions pack. Uh, appearing in the fewest sets, we've got the uh, two by two plate in sand yellow. Uh, doesn't seem like it would be that uncommon, but only appears in this and one other set. And of course, we also have 
the uh, Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver. Uh, very nicely molded here with a couple, uh, two different colors of paint, a little green and the white at the bottom. Uh, very cool to get. Uh, then, let's see, we have got the 6x6 Earth Blue plates. There's a lot of Earth Blue in the set, um, but this piece in particular only appears in two other sets. Some other pieces only appearing in a uh, couple sets. We've got the transparent light blue rim, which um, kind of surprised me that it only appears in two other sets because I must have bought the other just those other two because I feel like I have uh, quite a few of those. And then we've got in medium stone gray this uh, disc, which only appears in five total sets. Uh, some other uncommon pieces we've got include the uh, this transparent uh, little back plate thing. So it's got a place for a mini fig neck and then two studs on the back. Uh, that only appears in five sets. Uh, dark stone gray. We've got this two by two round jumper plate. Um, you know, I'm not even sure I knew that this piece existed. I know that I do, I want more of them. Uh, this piece only appears in six sets. Uh, going back to earth blue, we've got a one by three plate, not appearing in many sets, only uh, six it looks like. And then we've got um, this nifty a little medium stone gray roof tile with the 45 degree slope on the corners. And this only appears in seven sets. Uh, then the uh, fairly new piece, the one by one round plate with a hole in the middle, but this time it's in black, which is not very common, only appearing in eight sets. Um, and then this is another piece that I thought was very new, but apparently this one in particular already appears in eight sets. Uh, so it's like a one by one round plate, but it has a little shaft on it uh, about the size of like a, uh, a lightsaber bar, um, but only a, a couple, uh, maybe like a two plates high or so, or one and a half plates high. And uh, this looks like a really cool piece and I'm sure it's gonna have a lot of uses in uh, creations. Uh, then we've also got these matching uh, wedges in sand yellow, only appearing in nine sets each. And see if I can put this back in the right trays. And finally, unique to this set, uh, well not unique, but uncommon, we've got the Fez in dark red, only appearing in 10 sets total. Uh, so there's some other pieces I want to kind of call out just because I think they're, uh, they're pretty awesome. Uh, so there's quite a lot of dark blue or sorry, earth blue, I guess is the technical color. So we've got like a one by eight uh, tile in uh, earth blue. We've got a one by two brick with studs on two sides. We've got the, uh, the hinge plate. We've got a two by three plate. We've got a two by four plate. And we've got this nice uh, window. Uh, speaking of windows, there are quite a few printed pieces in this set, uh, there are no stickers because there's a Lego idea set. So we have the um, window pane piece that matches that window I just showed off in uh, dark blue or earth blue. Um, you know, not clear as you'd expect for a window. And then also for you know Doctor Who, we've got the uh, little uh, logo that is on the police box, and then we also have the uh, window piece. And there's quite a few of these to make uh, the window a look. Uh, going back to some of the interesting earth blue pieces, we've got a two by two jumper plate. We've got a one by two by two corner plate and matching tile. Uh, that's tile is awesome. And then uh, I think rounding things out, we have got a two by four plate a three by three plate and a one by six plate all in earth blue. Lots and lots of earth blue. Uh, a couple other printed parts to show off. So we have got, of course, the police box tiles. These are two one by three tiles. Um, and they, one has, you know, police, P, U, and C, and there has blick, all, and box, and they go together really well. Um, it is kind of interesting that they didn't put this on a single one by six. That could be because the one by three 
uh, tile was already in production in Earth Blue and other sets, so it would be much easier to print it uh, than it would be to put the 1x6 tile in production in that color. And finally, we, in uh, sand yellow, we've got the top of the Dalek's head. So quite a lot of awesome pieces, and I mean, that just kind of scratches the surface of some of the unique ones. Uh, obviously, a lot of Earth Blue, a lot of, um, you know, medium stone gray, uh, and lots of little greebly pieces for all the consoles. Uh, of course, we've got some bigger plates to build on. So quite a good selection. If you're looking for Earth Blue and uh, medium stone gray, this is a great set for that. Um, but I think we've uh, covered the pieces enough and it is time to get building. And here we've got the finished set and minifigures. Um, seems, seems a little small, but uh, don't worry. If you pop the top off and flip up the sides, and you can open it up. And as the TARDIS, of course, always is, it is bigger on the inside. Oh, get those pesky minifigures out of the way. So um, it kind of gets that uh, key part of the um, TARDIS in there. So, you know, it's bigger on the inside. You can uh, uh, fit a lot more on the inside than there is on the outside. So um, with that out of the way, let's take a quick look at the minifigs. So first we've got Peter Capaldi's 12th Doctor. Uh, he's got a purple coat, uh, which I believe he does wear at one point in the series, although it's not his most common garb. You can see his uh, fob watch on there. Uh, some detailing on the back. Uh, he only has a single printed face, 
and his serious look. Of course, we have got uh, Matt Smith as the 11th Doctor. He's got that nice uh, twill uh, jacket with, of course, his red bow tie, because bow ties are cool. I like that the jacket goes onto the legs. Printing on the back, he's got a serious expression and a happy expression, like when he is happy. And I think the hair is um, as perfect as they can get for him. Oh, and of course, the, uh, the sonic screwdriver. Don't want to forget that. And um, oh, and also because in addition to bow ties, fezes are cool. He can wear a fez. No Stetsons though. Uh, we have to get one of those from a Lone Ranger set or similar. Uh, and then we've got Clara Oswin Oswald. Uh, nice printing. She's got actually dual tone, uh, dual molded legs with red on the top and black on the bottom. And a nice dress that uh, looks pretty good with her little sweater. She's got a kind of happy face. And then on the back, a uh, sterner face for when the doctor does something that she doesn't like. Next up, we have got the Weeping Angel. So when you're looking at it, uh, when you're looking at it, it's uh, just kind of sitting there. And then you uh, blink, and all of a sudden, do do do, it's coming after you. And of course, uh, arms have uh, more friction to them than the connection there. Uh, so it uses that clear uh, piece to connect the wings to the back. I do feel like it kind of makes that a little thick and having it in clear is a little distracting. It would have been nicer if it had been in medium stone gray to, uh, to match. Um, but still, I think it does a good job of capturing the Weeping Angel. And finally, we've got the Daleks. Uh, both Daleks are identical. And so we've got, of course, the uh, printed top. We've got the uh, manipulator arm and the laser arm um, and the head which can turn 360 degrees. Um, very nice little construction. Of course, modeled after the more recent Daleks in the TV show. And um, I think it captures them pretty well. Moving on to the interior itself. Uh, we have the main console. It's got its six-sided control panel. And uh, there's a couple printed parts that I had missed earlier. So there is this one. It's a uh, street sign, a two by two street sign with some nice kind of Time Lord symbols on it. Um, so I like how each of the panels has something a little different. This one's kind of plain. But then of course we've got, you know, the uh, lever that can go up and down, uh, some dials. We've got this other printed two by two round tile, which is pretty nifty. Uh, then we've got another little control panel with the same road sign there. And then finally, we have got uh, another little control panel. Uh, of course, there's some controls off to the sides. I like the, the railing that kind of surrounds it. Uh, I think the steps using the ladder work really well. Um, you know, they, uh, the way they hold uh, or fold, they kind of stay at the good, good distance there. Uh, looks really nice. Uh, and then of course, we've got the walkway going into uh, the door of the TARDIS. So that connects just with a little axle that goes into a one by two brick with an axle hole in there. So we'll take a look at the inside here. And another printed part I missed was actually the inside of the TARDIS door. Um, that's not quite how it looks in the, the show, but it's, uh, it does have kind of a, a cool um, vibe because since it's backwards, uh, we got some little detailing in here. There are a couple of jumper plates there so that someone can stand in here uh, when it's closed. Uh, so looking at this while it's closed, uh, I had mentioned at the beginning when we were looking at the parts, I was kind of confused by the uh, one by threes, um, but that makes sense now since uh, they have to be able to split so that the doors can open. And so that's a really kind of ingenious mechanism. And then since the jumper plates are on the door sides, uh, when you put the top on, that further uh, kind of locks in place so it can't open. Of course, uh, we've got the light uh, that makes the whooshing noise. Um, it's interesting to note that this is actually built on a 7x7 seven seven base. We've got, of course, the windows. Um, another printed part I missed, of course, was the, uh, the sign, the police telephone, free for use of public. Um, pulled to open, and it's got the little uh, logo there. So it definitely captures the look of the TARDIS. You can imagine it uh, spinning 
through uh, time and space, taking the doctor and his companions wherever they want to be. So I think this model looks really great when it's uh, all closed up. And then uh, you know, just a simple pop the top off, flip these up, maybe. Flip them up and reassemble. And then uh, opens up and there's the doctor. And then he can enter into the interior of the TARDIS. Um, so I think that is uh, pretty awesome. Lots of details in here. Um, I think that they did a, a great job in deciding to include both the 11th and the 12th Doctor. Um, you know, the 12th Doctor is obviously the current one, but I'd say the 11th is by far one of the fan favorites. Um, you know, of course, it makes sense to include Clara since she was a companion for both the 11th and 12th. Uh, of course, you've got to include the Daleks since they are the Doctor's ultimate enemy. Uh, the Weeping Angel is another good choice because it's a very popular uh, enemy from uh, the newer series. And, you know, obviously they could have done some other enemies like the, uh, the Cybermen, but they, that uh, character does appear in one of the LEGO Dimensions packs. Um, as does K9 in a different Dimensions pack. So there are quite a few characters that you can now get to expand your LEGO Doctor Who experience. Uh, I think this set is pretty fantastic. For $60, you get over 600 parts. You get an awesome uh, TARDIS that is you can look at from any angle and looks great. But not only that, you get the interior of the TARDIS with a, a huge amount of detail. You get two doctors, a companion, and three enemies, pretty even uh, split there. Um, you know, not necessarily a lot of uh, play features on the inside, other than you know, maybe like the, the handles can kind of move a little bit. Um, but you do get the kind of cool bigger on the inside play feature, which I think is uh, probably the best, uh, one of the best play features in an idea set that I've seen. Uh, can't top that. So, if you are a Doctor Who fan, I think you owe it to yourself to pick up this set. Um, I'm not sure how long it'll be on the store shelves. I can see it uh, selling out very quickly. Uh, I can imagine it being quite popular, especially uh, now around the holidays. So, if you see this set and you're a Doctor Who fan, I recommend you pick it up before it is gone. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching this review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, you can find the full review of the set on bzpower.com where we have high-res pictures and uh, more in-depth thoughts on the set. While you're over on BZ Power, make sure you check out our message boards where we have people talking about uh, you know, Lego sets such as this one or uh, some of the Lego Bionicle line or Ninjago or many other themes that are out there. Uh, they're sharing their creations, their mocks, their artwork, their stories, playing games, entering contests, uh, lots of activity going on on BZ Power, so make sure you check it out. We've got LEGO news posted every single day. And uh, finally, if you could subscribe to our channel, we would greatly appreciate it. It allows you to get all of our videos as soon as we post them and keep you up to date with all the goings on on BZ Power and inside the LEGO community. So once again, this is Black Six. Uh, reviewing the Lego Doctor Who ideas set. And I thank you all again for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.